the level of athlete, like I could not believe how good some of these teams were. Yeah. It was it was awesome. I think it know? was fourteen former college athletes. We had yeah. two former professional athletes. That's, and then the number of varsity yeah. letters, I I can't remember what it was. I sent it out in an email, but it was like fifty varsity letters between thirty two people. So really almost everybody was a multi sport varsity athlete in high school. Yeah. And then you got former college, former pro people. So first off, lifelong buddies. Our parents know each other. We've been raised together, essentially. Yeah. And, you know, there are people in the world that when you're around them, they kind of like, I don't know, there's good people, good energy, bad energy. There's people in the world that kind of like you get around them and they kind of suck the energy out of you. Sure. That's totally, no. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Eric, come on now. But there's the opposite started. where it's like every time that I am around Brad Hansen, like it's good vibes, good energy, and you just make everyone around you feel awesome. So- just coming from your friend, I appreciate that. I appreciate you in my life. Super glad that you're in my life and that you came to Man Games. So that's Thank you. that's super awesome. Thank you, Eric. I, uh, I have to echo the same. You know, it's uh, it, it kind of feels like no matter how much time has passed between you know we seeing each we've seen each other, and I'm upstairs and I'm seeing your kids, and man, they've grown years since yeah. I've seen them last. And it doesn't matter. It's you know I can show up and you're still going to be one of my best friends. So yeah, you know it's just it's great. I appreciate uh, appreciate who you are for me too. Well, you're a good man. And so I want to ask you this before we get too far into stuff. This is going to be sports related because we just did man games. Sure. What would you consider your best sport? What sport are you most confident in if you're going to get thrown into a sports environment? Sure. Where you'll be able to perform with high level athletes? Um, I would say right now golf. Golf. Um, just because that's the one I do the most. Yeah. Uh, it's it's what I've probably focused on for the last. Three four years, um, you do no, your own league, don't you? Yeah, so we have uh, a league. It's called Degenerates Golf. Um, me and some buddies, we just we were playing in the Murray Parkway League for oh three four years, and we uh, we just kind of wanted to play different courses, and so um, we started a league where we every week you just go have to go out. Um, the only rule is you have to play with somebody else that's in the league. That's the only way we can figure out how to keep it fair because. Everyone's competitive enough that it's like, no, I'm not going to let you cheat. So. Cheating would happen? I can't believe <laughs> oh cheating gosh. would happen. Uh, there's still those times where it's like, hmm, that's interesting. I saw the score you put up. I've golfed with you. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, um, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, we have we have a ton of fun with it. And, you know, it doesn't, it's not a, I'm not going to retire off of the income. I can tell you that much right now. Yeah. But um, it's enough that we can put together usually a fun little golf trip every year. Um, you know, we've gone to... Arizona, we did uh, St. George. We've done, you know, just a fun, fun trip with a good group of guys. So, um, how big was, is that league? How many people are in it? There's like 160 people in it. Wow. How do you coordinate that? How how often are you playing? You said once a week. Yeah. So we play once a week. Um, the nice part is we don't do a whole lot of the coordination. We just put out a schedule, and then you can play any single day of the week. It's you know, you have to submit your score before 5 p.m. on Sunday, but we don't have to make times. We don't have to do any of that stuff. It's just. Uh, there's there's two different uh, pots that you can enter into. There's a gross score and a net score, and there's actually a skins pot too, so I guess there's three. But um, the very, very, very good golfers are in the gross pot. There's like 15 of them that are all going for gross score. Uh, everyone else's net score, which is based off of handicaps. Um, and it was kind of crazy. We started it, and we're thinking, okay, we might get 30 people. You know, it'd, it'd be fun to just get some buddies and – and we happened to start this year that COVID hit, and oh, wow. that was, uh, you know, COVID obviously was horrible for the world, but it's the best thing that ever happened to golf because that's all people could do was be outside. And with so, those metal cups, I'm sure your scores were great. And you're just <laughs> yeah. like ramming it. All you have to do is bounce it <laughs> off. Yeah. Uh, I got really good at putting, and yeah. then they took it away, and, oh, I'm not as good as I thought I was. <laughs> yeah, all right. Kidding. But, um, but, yeah, so that's uh, that's the format of that, and we've enjoyed it. You know, we have a couple little tournaments. We do uh, a 36-hole tournament two days in a row. Which is an excruciating amount of golf. I'll be yeah. honest with you. By the the last the back eighteen, so to say, it's just throwing my clubs, <laughs> trying to get it move the ball in the right direction, and I'm happy. But it's it's so much fun. It really is. So those pots is that like a season long thing, or is it every week there's going to be a pot involved? So every week, every, every week, week okay. there is a uh, net winner and a gross winner, and then at the end of it there is a tournament which is still going on right now. Actually, there's. Uh, and they better hurry because I think it's supposed to snow this weekend. But um, there's supposed to be one more round, um, which I did not make it to the final round this mm -hmm. year. It's fine. I, I got to the semifinals last year, but 
That's okay. I, yeah. I've had uh, I've had a decent run this year. I just got knocked out. The guy that knocked me out is still in it, so I feel like I at least get second place. It's kind of where you're it. rooting for him to win <laughs> yeah. it, even though he beat you. Yeah. Exactly. I get so, it. I get yeah. it. So with Man Games, we talked a lot about Man Games leading up to it, so you kind of had a general idea, but this was your first Man Games event, golf was included. Yeah. Take me through what your expectations were and then what the reality was. Of just golf? Of all of it. Of, of all of it? Of Man well, Games in general. Um, you know, I was... I was expecting just to show up and have a lot of fun. I, I didn't know exactly what to expect, right? Because, I mean, I've seen the, uh, I've seen the different uh, areas where it's like, okay, is this going to be like a bachelor party that we just go and hang out for <laughs> a hammered. weekend? Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know exactly what to expect there. Is this going to be, you know, just hanging out with buddies for a weekend? And and was is it going to be ultra competitive? And I'm trying to win it. And it's on, honestly, it was like a combination of the three. You know, I had a lot of fun poker. We're sitting, hanging out with everybody. That just feels like hanging out and having a having a great time. Yeah. Um, uh, some of the events where I was a little bit more competitive in, like golf, that I wanted to win that one. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I'm pretty sure you won that one. We tied, but, but we well, took second. Yeah, we uh, we were doing really well. And then I was. It was really fun actually watching whatever app you used for the golf. Where I could watch the live scores. Yeah. That was sweet. Golf that, genius. Yeah, golf genius. That was pretty yeah. cool. So we um, golfed at Mountaindale, yeah. and the people at Mountaindale actually showed me that like the day before. They were like, oh, hey, no do way. you want to track this just real time? And I was like, what are you talking about? We have this app. And they explained it to me. I was like, heck yeah. I'd never yeah. done that before. It's usually like you wait, you get in, and then you're waiting for everybody's score. But yeah. Real time could see it. That that made it really, really cool because I was I was the one doing it for our team, and it was like the end of every hole. Through about nine holes, we still had a chance, and then – you guys got a bunch of birdies and we did not. But, <laughs> you know. but it's nice because you know, okay, I have to birdie this hole. Yeah. They did, so I have to birdie yeah. this too. And even then, even going into you know 17 and 18, I was tracking it because I'm like, I know every place is a significant amount of points. And yeah. so I'm thinking, okay, there's no way that they are going to birdie this hole. Oh, shoot, they birdied. Okay, we got to get another one now. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it was a lot of fun. So um, that was a great event to start with, I think. Uh one, because you spend so much time with your team mm -hmm. that I think you build a lot of camaraderie. Where the other events, you're kind of, you know, you're splitting off, it's two and two, um, or, you know, poker, you're sitting by yourself. But that one, you are all together for the entire four hour period, which I honestly, I think that's a great way to do it. Like, because yeah. um, I didn't know, I didn't know Taylor very well. Yeah. Um, got to know him super well there. And then it made the rest of the weekend a lot of fun. And so. nobody really knew Peyton either, right? Yeah. So Peyton was getting to know everybody, yep, Wayne, exactly. everybody kind of knew each other at different levels. Yeah. And by the time we were, you know, the end of that, we were all, we were all buddies. And then yeah. it was like, this is going to be a fun weekend. <laughs> that <laughs> weather know? was perfect too. Oh like, my that's gosh. my biggest concern with man games because yeah. the first day is outside. Yeah. And if we have bad weather, it's, it's kind of sucky. You're going to do it anyway, but yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. I would much rather do it in the weather we had than a downpour. So, yeah. Well, we crammed five events into that first day. Were you exhausted after the first day? I felt like I got hit by a truck. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, man. <laughs> like, I, uh, it really was reminiscent of those awful CrossFit competitions that I used to do. <laughs> it's like, why is everything in my body sore? Like, yeah. these muscles, I haven't, like, I think actually what made me, the most sore was spike ball. Yeah. It's like running and diving and jump. Like, I don't know. I was like that. stretching out my leg really far. So my hamstrings were shot from spike yeah. ball because you're like reaching for things with your legs. And yeah, I was oh. exhausted. That was, that one got me. And then the home run derby too. Like, I was actually sore in my abs. <laughs> Gosh, I have not swung a bat like that in a yeah. long time. But, and I was obviously, obviously swinging as hard as I possibly could yeah. every time because it's home you run got derby. To. Yeah. You got to. I was, uh, and I felt so bad in the home run derby. So my buddy Ross came and stepped in for uh, for Taylor. He had to go coach his kids, which he did tell me that his kids did win the game. So it was worth Perfect. It, but, Good job, Taylor. Um, yeah. So uh, Ross came in, and he was the first one up for the home run derby, and it was, what, 30 pitches, right? 25. 25 pitches. Mm -hmm. um, I think I – so I was doing – Did your field get 30? No wonder you guys did so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I just – it's all a blur, man. Yeah. There's too much yeah. – too much – athleticism on that field yeah. for me to remember pitches yeah. <laughs> but um so ross gets up and and he played you know high school ball he's he's a very athletic dude and so um i'm sitting here thinking all right if i can just get this ball within the strike zone we're gonna be okay and i think i threw him 25 pitches in about 20 seconds and <laughs> <laughs> that's just rapid fire oh my gosh he got like there was a couple of times where he 
<laughs> had to put his hand up. I'm like, whoa, okay, maybe I am. Pitcher's going pace, bro. Fast. Get in the box. Yeah. yeah. So, so we learned that lesson early. Yeah. Which, sorry, Ross, for you being the guinea pig on that, but you know, it is what it is. So, um, but that was a really fun event too. I I really liked the home run derby. That was, was my personal favorite this year. Yeah, it was the home run derby. Yeah, I just too. have never been a part of one, and then to be under the lights and yeah. just the environment was really cool. Yeah, it was it was really fun, and on our field. Uh, it was great. I was, I think I was the first one that put one out, which made me feel really good until like the next four people in a row hit it out. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, that's not that hard. <laughs> I was surprised how few home runs yeah. there were. However, it was a big field. It was, it was 314 a, yeah. feet, I think. Yeah. Well, the first one where I thought we were going to play, mm-hmm. it was like 420. Well, there's there's <laughs> nobody that's going to hit yeah. that out. <laughs> These are but, softballs, by the way, for those who are listening yeah. to softballs, not it baseballs. Was, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed the home run derby. Um, I think, uh, and you played baseball in high school, right? I did. Yeah. So I played at Brighton. Uh, baseball was the sport. I mean, if you're going to ask me which sport I was best at growing up, it was probably baseball. Yeah. Um, you're a stellar basketball player too, though. So you got to give yourself credit. I enjoyed basketball more, but honestly, I was, I hit my stride in basketball after high school, Mm -hmm. um, which was, which is kind of interesting. That's, that's one of the things I really liked about man games is because, I mean, okay, I graduated high school. I was six foot three and 160 pounds. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was a, twig and very uncoordinated hadn't grown into my body yet <laughs> yeah. um and so you know a lot of the a lot of the things that i can do now i mean it, it wasn't an option then. i was not going to hit the ball out of the park then i just, yeah. i couldn't there yeah. was i didn't have the strength and uh so it's kind of fun to come back now and play all these sports that i'm just a completely different person you know i'm yeah. 50 pounds heavier and i've had time to figure out the length of my arms like yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. and so uh getting that uh, that level of competitiveness that we had in high school, you know, trying to to come back in and and feeling kind of the you know the nervousness or the the jitters or you know I'm when I was I stepped up to, up to the plate and it was crazy. I was just like, oh my gosh, I haven't done this in a while. I'm nervous, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I love that and and it was really fun to be able to bring that back. And I think I'm much more competitive now than I ever was then. So that's yeah. that's fun. It's like okay second chance you know yeah <laughs> so well and, and I enjoyed it the opening speech i make that point about there's kind of three things that i hope everybody gets out of man games and the first is what you just talked about the chance to compete and the chance to feel the nerves again and yeah. to feel the pressure to do well and yeah. that your team is counting on you you're kind of wanting to do well yourself mm-hmm. and you just don't feel that the same way as often once you get into an adulthood and you're married and you have kids and you have a job and all that stuff yeah so it's kind of a cool opportunity to feel that it is it's different even even then you know you We've played in rec leagues together and stuff like that with basketball, and you know we've played church ball, all that stuff. But um, it's not quite the same level of like, okay, I want to do really well here. Yeah. Like I'm competing for points. Where most of the time, especially if it's a 9 p.m. game, you know those 9 p.m. games. Yeah, I really don't care what's happening. I'm just like, okay, I'm going to show up and I'm going to try and win. And if I don't, okay, I'm going to go home now. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but, totally. Uh, it's it's a much more competitive environment. Um, the level of athlete. Like I could not believe how good some of these teams were. Yeah, it was it was awesome. I think it was fourteen former college athletes. We had two former professional athletes, and then the number of varsity letters. I I can't remember what it was. I sent it out in an email, but it was like fifty varsity letters between thirty two people. So really, almost everybody was a multi sport varsity athlete in high school. Yeah, and then you've got former college, former pro people. Yeah, I know. That was one of the things Peyton brought up. So Peyton played rugby uh, at SEU. And um, what was the guy's name that was the rugby player? Ryan. Ryan, yeah. Yeah. Uh, We showed up and Peyton goes, I've never been hit harder in my life than by that guy. And I was like, oh, no. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And so it was was funny. I mean, he just – he knew exactly who he was. And it's like that that guy was BYU's entire rugby team. Yeah. Like that – he was their their national championship was because of him. And well, that's what's great, too, because it's not only is he a former college athlete, but he's an All-American. He played on the USA team over in Europe. Yeah. I mean, he was he was a legitimate. He won national championships with BYU in college. He won it with Highland. He was in the Forever Strong movie. Like, I got to get Ryan on here. Hopefully he listens to this and we can get him on here to talk, need too. To. But you need to do that, man. Like, he's... unbelievable athlete. Yeah. And that's, honestly, it was just, it was that way across the board. Yeah. Um, everyone there, everyone there could compete at every single sport. Yeah. Like, it's... Uh, I'm I'm embarrassed of our spike ball score, but uh, I thought we'd at least win a game. Yeah. <laughs> but the the level of athletes there is it was awesome. I felt bad for your team because on that first day, so we had golf first, then pickleball, 
mm, two, you and Wayne really don't play pickleball, and then you get thrown into a pickleball tournament, and then no, the next event is spike ball. Fun. You yeah. don't really play spike ball, so you get thrown into a spike ball tournament. No, I think that uh, I would prepare a little bit more. How for, would you prepare? Uh, I would look at the events. <laughs> <laughs> that would help. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we did have – so uh, the only person on our team had, who had actually done man games before was Taylor. And yeah. He was the captain of the team. And it was we were kind of kind of laughing about it because Taylor had sent uh, me, Wayne, and Peyton a text saying, "Hey, we need to get uh, get Wayne out and get him playing pickleball." And Taylor uh, or Wayne responds and he says, "You're in Europe and you're texting me about pickleball." <laughs> <laughs> it was like, okay, at the time I was like, "That's that might be a little much," but you know what? We won three games in pickleball out there of you go. what uh, seven seven yeah so. Uh, Wayne, Wayne did pretty well. Um, I will say for the, the reigning old guy on our team, he was probably the most valuable person on our team. That's awesome. That's <laughs> like, awesome. Yeah, he was, he killed it in golf. He was absolutely clutch. There yeah. was so many putts where it was like, well, we missed it. Best of luck, Wayne. <laughs> and he just drained it. Uh, he won his table in, in poker. poker. Yeah. Yep. Uh, basketball. I'll be honest. I thought I was going to be the best basketball player on our team. Wayne killed it. Wayne did great. He was a beast. Yeah. Like, I thought I was going to go post people up. Like, I'm going to get out of your way, man. I'm just going to stand over people. here. No, it was. Yeah. It was impre- – I, I, was, I was impressed. I was not completely shocked. I've played with him before. But when I played with him before, he was mostly an outside shooter. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what I was expecting. And he just went in and decided, I'm going to take this paint. It's mine. And <laughs> – you can't have it. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> it was fun. Your yeah. team was so fun to have. Again, Taylor has been there. He's awesome. He's been to several man games. And then the three others, this was your first man games. Yeah. And I think it was 70, 75% of the people at this one, it was their first one. Yeah. And knowing, having been there before, I think like if you were to play this again, you would have a distinct advantage over the first timers because you know what's coming. Yeah. But with so many people who didn't know what's coming, we had two entire teams where nobody on their team had been there. So they didn't have anybody that could kind of give them a heads up of what was coming. But yeah. that's what's also fun. And both of those teams, so Ryan was on one of those teams. Ted oh, Farron really? was on that same team with the Twins. Ted Farron is the all-time leading points scorer at BYU Lacrosse. So That's what Peyton told me. Yeah. Like, come on, there are some... There are some competitors. I'm glad thing. we didn't play lacrosse and rugby because we would have been we, <laughs> hammered. <laughs> Just Somebody destroyed. would have died. Yeah. Somebody would have died. Then so. the other team that came, so you're in trouble with their team name. They had such good athletes as well. Former college basketball players, former college football players. I just really were good athletes. And then Justin's dunking on people in the middle of the basketball yeah. games. I don't know if he dunked on you guys. He dunked on us. No, he was really tired by the time he got to Perfect. us. Thank goodness. Yeah, it was we like one of the last games. Him. I mean, when his calves are literally the size of a basketball, yeah. like he could jump out of the gym. He's an unbelievable athlete. Yeah, that yeah. was that was pretty fun to watch. Um, yeah, there was, uh, you know, there were some really fun teams. Uh, I think one of the things I felt bad. Peyton was a he was a trooper, but he was really hurt. And he had like a bulge <laughs> disc or something. Yeah, in his he back? has two bulge discs oh in his back, goodness. and yeah. so he's. Uh, I mean, he was living on ibuprofen and mm. you know, maybe a little bit of whiskey, but you know, that's <laughs> just kind of the way we were getting through. So. He was, <laughs> yeah. He, he was uh, he was not feeling his best, but at the same time, uh, he showed up. He had fun the entire time. Like it's hard not to smile around that guy. Yeah, so, he's great. Yeah, yeah. but uh, it was it was honestly it was a blast. I think that the event was really really well put on. Um, I was impressed with the level of coordination. Uh, the volunteers, so cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, to to track that many games going on at the same time and saying okay. Great, you played here. Awesome. What was your score? You're playing here next. Uh, go this. Like, I mean, he's constantly having to, yeah. to just coordinate everything. I can't imagine the level of stress that that would take. So, yeah. um, we've uh, all been to tournaments, right? Like, you travel somewhere, you play a basketball tournament, baseball yeah. tournament, whatever. Yeah. And this is eight tournaments in two days. Exactly. With several teams yeah. and just what you're talking about, all these coordination things. So, big shout out to Alan, Chad, Christine, Haley, Kiara. I mean, our. Our volunteers were fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I have a hard enough time making one bracket, and they did it for you know all these sports. It was, it was really well put on. So um, the the coordination. I mean, hats off to you on that one. That's a lot it, of. Help. There's a lot that goes into this. Yes. And so um, it was it was way more professional and way uh, way more legit than I thought. <laughs> I mean, it was it was a real like this is this could be something big. Yeah. Um, you know. Um, I'm excited to see what you do with it. I know we've talked a little bit about that, about yeah. the growth and expansion and where you take it, and, and you've got some good ideas on that. Um, yeah. 
Well, we'll see where it goes. I'm going to piggyback off of what you're doing with the degenerates golf thing. I think that there's a certain aspect of that that I want to implement. In yeah, the there's, a, there's a little bit of it where if you can offload some of it, make the players do some of the work, that's a good idea. Have them yeah. coordinate. Um, it just makes it this monumental task a little bit easier, right? Well, a lot goes into this, and the entry fee is expensive. It's 250 bucks. I mean, that's a that's a considerable amount of money for people. Do you feel like that was worth it? Oh, yeah. yeah. I Honestly, yeah. The gift bag alone. I mean, I use that backpack all the time. It's yeah. The backpack is amazing. The Awala water bottle, that is like... There we go. I don't yeah. know if they can see it. <laughs> yeah, uh, which I didn't know. That is owned by Blender Bottle, right? Yeah, Trove Brands owns that. Blender Bottle, Whiskware, and um, I think it's a by... Uh, they're going to hate... There's a fourth brand there that they own. That's okay. Well, fourth brand, you get recognition too. Yes. There you go. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I thought it was well worth it. Just honestly for... The the amount, just if you're looking at what you're paying for and what you're receiving physically, uh, and every single pocket of that bag had something in it. Yeah. I mean, even the tiny little thing on the t- – I didn't actually find that until well afterwards, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was playing as I, I was wearing that backpack and taking my kids on a little bike ride. And I went like this. It's like, what is it? There's chapstick in there. Yeah. <laughs> There's <laughs> like, a hidden pocket. Yeah, it was awesome. So – um, I also found the peanut butter things or the energy chews at the back. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, there's just, it can, it's the gift that keeps on giving. I was hoping that you'd find that early so that it didn't like explode in the backpack as oh, you were doing all good. It did. Yeah, we're, we're, so, we're solid. What was the prize that you ended up, up taking? Uh, I ended up taking the poker chips, which nice. was perfect because I don't have poker. Like I didn't have I think a it's nice 500 uh, chips. Yeah. If I'm... I had a really small one. I mean, it was like one you get at Walmart for 10 bucks, you yeah. know, and this... Now I have a legit set, and I used it. I think I told you, I, yeah. I used it last weekend. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. And you are also a sponsor. So again, so many thanks for you to do that. Sure, you contributed and made that event so much better. And I heard several comments where there's a lot going on. We're getting through a lot of sports and a lot of events in in a day, and so to have meals there ready to go rather than them having to go somewhere and get it themselves or anything like that. So. Right after golf, the golf course provided these box lunches with wraps that were fantastic. Mm -hmm. People were able to eat that. And then we were able to have dinner that night with pizza that was brought in. So the meals were fantastic. The snacks at the poker event were there for people. And then Cafe Rio that last day. So we had food all because of you. So thank you, Sotheby's Realty. I wanted to get into that a little bit, um, both from a sponsorship perspective, again, You've been to a lot of events, golf tournaments, all kinds of things through your professions. Yeah. From a sponsorship perspective, um, I always am worried about, is it going to be worth it for them as a sponsor? Are they going to get something out of this? Is And there's niceness that's out of the kindness of your heart, but in the end, you're running a business. From a sponsorship perspective, expectations versus reality in man games. Uh, sure. So first off, I would I would do that anyway just to support you, even if I got nothing out of it. It would be worth it. Yeah. Uh, my network's small, though, so I can't go to <laughs> <laughs> But uh, just from a business side of it, I mean, that's uh, evaluating from that side, uh, knocked it out of the park. Cool. Um, I mean, I think it it was a total investment of under two grand, something mm-hmm. like that. And uh, in my world, you know, I, I try and measure things uh, in real estate. It's, okay, uh, can I generate any, any business off of this? Can I generate... It doesn't matter if it's now or within the next five years. You know, mm-hmm. a deal, one deal could net me ten grand. And so, um, you know, the way I, I was looking at it is, this: if I get one single deal out of this, then I five x my investment, and yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that uh, the exposure that you gave a lot of shout outs, uh, starting in the email. Um, mm-hmm. You know, you made me look way better than I actually no, am in this email. No. Um, but you send it out to everybody, uh, then man, what three or four different times during it, you, you gave me recognition there. You let everybody know that I was in real estate, which, um, I think that's one of the hardest things for people to do, which, uh, when promoting themselves is say, Hey, uh, you know, this is what I do. I would love some help. Come, come talk to me. Yeah. You know, that's, that's not an easy ask for people in any profession. And so it makes it a lot easier when you, specifically point out, hey, he's in real estate, he helped me with this, go talk to him. Yeah. Um, and uh, for the return, it's been fantastic. Um, I got uh, uh, one deal really, really quickly um, mm-hmm. that were going there uh, with 
uh, it was so my buyer ended up backing out of that. But what happened was it got her in the mood to buy, and I actually just put her in her contract yesterday on a different property. Nice. So it's still closed. Like yeah. that's that's what we needed. Um, that was over at Holmes Homes, and uh, they were fantastic. And then uh, the twins, I've talked to them about uh, possibly buying a, a duplex. And um, let's see, I've talked to a couple other people too, just just kind of staying in touch. That yeah. you know, that's one thing is not everyone buys and sells a house every month. You yeah. know, <laughs> yeah. so it's just it's just getting their relationships. And so um, I thought it was a really unique opportunity because competing in it and being a sponsor. Um, I was able to meet everybody. Yeah, you know, I'm able to actually get some FaceTime with all these people. Yeah, um, and one, it encourages me to be a lot nicer. So, <laughs> <There's> <laughs> that. Was, well, the first rule of man games is don't be an ass. And yeah. so, for the sponsors, it's yeah. nice because it's like, hey, you're in front of people now, and if you're going to be a jerk in this, then they're not going to want to work with you. Exactly, and you know, and I, I didn't. There wasn't much of that. There's there's a healthy amount of competition in yeah. that. You know, I, I don't know if I saw a single time where there was like, oh man, this is intense. This is yeah. somebody needs to back off, which was almost surprising with how many competitive people there yeah. are there. Um, you always kind of expect at least one dust up. So well done that there was nothing there, but that's my, um, that's my biggest fear of man games, right? Because we have a bunch of competitive dudes yeah. all thrown into an environment where we're going for points and we're going yeah. for prizes. And so far, mm-hmm. knock on wood, we haven't had any serious dust up. Again, there are going to be little flare ups again in basketball. Sure. Is this a foul or physical, whatever? There's a little flare up. And then what I love about this event is that it just, died right yeah. so it's like hey what's going on and then it dies mm-hmm. and then at the end of it everybody's hugging each other so yeah and and that's exactly the way it is um you know i i think that it was it was fantastic from that point that i could try absolutely as hard as i possibly could like yeah. i wasn't going easy i mean obviously well, i wish i could say i was going easy <laughs> but i wasn't um but uh you know you can you can really go all out on every single sport like and the other team knows that you want to beat them. Yeah. And that's, it's kind of rare to have that. Even, you know, if you and I went and played tennis right now, you would be taking it easy on me. Yeah. But if it was in man games, you would crush my soul. Well, I want so. to get it over as fast as possible <laughs> yeah. because I've got seven other events. I exactly. Gotta do. And, and it makes it a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, it just, it brings it to that next level of, of competitiveness. Um, and that's, you know, that shows in, in the sponsorship, I was able to, uh, to really connect with some people that yeah. um, I would not have had the chance to meet. Oh, the uh, the other one that I really I haven't reached out to yet. I need to. I um, uh, Sioni. Yeah, he's got his foundation. Yeah, um, I think brighter that's futures. So cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. brighter futures. And I am. Uh, if you're listening to the Sioni, I am going to reach out to you um, before Christmas. I'm going to put something together so that uh, we can get something going with Sotheby's and 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 get those guys something because it's uh, that one. You know, being a parent, yeah, just. It hits you in, right in the feels. Yeah. You know, when there's, he's talking about kids having to move their things in trash bags, it makes them feel like trash. I was just like, oh my, I almost broke down in tears yeah. right then, you know? And so, uh, and I, I never would have met him. Yeah. And they're, they're a super cool organization. Brighter Futures, um, they're a foster agency. They help place foster kids with parents. Yeah. And they've been huge supporters of man games and girl games. Um, they have a lot of really, really good athletes on both sides that come to both events. And so, yeah, they're, they're always looking for help, and so yeah, that's, that's really cool that you're able to meet them. Yeah, um, I think it's you know it's it's just been it's been really neat just the networking, just the you've got some sort of a camaraderie or a bond. Like yeah. oh man, it's like you know you've all you were all in the trenches together. You you were all sore together. You, yeah, I mean, it's like you went and did this big hard thing. Like at the end of it, everyone was sore. Yeah, everyone's yeah. beat up and. It was kind of fun to end with dodgeball, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was because uh, <laughs> everyone's just like, I got nothing left, but I'll throw this ball at you as yeah. I can. So <laughs> well, that was unique because you got to merge with another team. Like yeah. all of it is kind of your team against the others. And then that one, yeah. you combine teams with another one. Yeah. I, like I one. you know, I like to think that that is why I was in last place the entire time because I just wanted to play with you. Yeah, that's so. what it was. <laughs> yeah, we were both throttling so that yeah, we could end exactly. up on the same dodgeball. You know, we have team. different. Different speeds, but you know, we're gonna do the same same place. But it is it's interesting because even from the first time I did this, so it started with a group of buddies, and you're actually gonna be at the first one, but you had a conflict come up, so you couldn't be at the yeah. first one. But it was a bunch of buddies. I knew everybody to some extent, but not everybody else knew everybody else. And it kind of turns into a networking event that isn't a networking event, yeah. right? Like it's not meant for that, but because you're playing all these things, you get to know them. And personally, I'm a very judgmental person. And I judge people very quickly 
Okay. When I observe how they handle themselves in a competitive environment, specifically sports. Sure. So if they're getting beat, are they the type of person that's just going to fold up their tent and just quit? Mm -hmm. Are they going to try and figure out a new way? If they, or if on the other end, if they're beating somebody and they're noticeably better, are they going to be a jerk about it? And are they going to try to hurt somebody? Like how does somebody handle winning and losing? Yeah. And I judge people really quickly on who, if, if I think they're a good person or not, which probably isn't, <laughs> isn't the best way to do it. But I mean, it's, it's one way of judging people. I yeah. think that it's, it's not, you're probably not wrong. <laughs> I mean, you get to people's core emotions and core feelings pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when there's a, uh, when there's a lot of, uh, you know, emotions being thrown around and, you know, you're, you're being challenged. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to teach my, my, almost four-year-old little daughter right now how to lose gracefully. <laughs> uh, I haven't mastered it yet, so yeah. it's really pretty entertaining for me to you know, yeah. try and teach her how to do that. Um, she really likes me to race cars on the freeway, which is not <laughs> ideal. <laughs> so she's like, you got to beat that car. This is a, I cannot pass that car. Like, yeah. That's a one-lane road. <laughs> but, <laughs> awesome. but, and then if I don't, she just falls, you know, completely folds over in tears. I'm yeah. like, okay, so we got something to work on here. Right. Yeah. Which is really interesting because they always say that uh, your kids are, you know, a reflection of you. So uh, if you see me crying on, you know, on the way out of here, that's probably what happened. Yeah, so. you're a very competitive person. <laughs> yeah. But I love that you've touched on, again, there are the three pillars. One, I want you to feel the feelings of pressure and competitiveness. Two, you're going to make memories with your friends, which mm -hmm. you talked about that, about golf, and you have that four hours, four and a half hours. We actually yeah. played slow because there were some groups ahead of us that were slow, but yeah. a lot of time to meet them. And then the third is you meet really, really cool people. Yeah. And you're included in that, but there are so many really cool people outside of sports that have really, really cool stories of what they've overcome or what they've been able to do with succeed in life or mm -hmm. all of these things. Really, really, really cool people. Yeah. Uh, I think that it w it's a really, really fun and unique event um, in the way that uh, it is, for me personally, the way that I get business is by connecting with people. Yeah. That's it. I mean, that's my whole job is connecting with people. And um, I was able to actually do that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not network networking, but it is, you kind of mentioned that that is the best way ever to, to network yeah. because there's no pressure. It's not forced. It's not, I have a name tag on, I'm going to come up and say, yeah, so what are you in? You know, it's, that, that's not what it is. It's, we're all there doing the same things. There's, there's natural conversations that come up. You're going to meet the people that you meet with. You're going to, you're going to jive with the people that, you know, you happen to rub shoulders with. And honestly, it was everybody. Yeah. Like it was everyone there. I don't think there was a single team that, that they'd come up and, you know, whatever sport. And I was like, oh, geez, these guys again, you know, they're just, yeah. it didn't exist. Yeah. You know, it was, it was just, uh, it was a great time. And honestly, it's, you know, uh, until somebody decides to, you know, start catering with five star meals, I'm going to be the sponsor. So, <laughs> so you're coming back. I'm you're coming back. Perfect. I'm coming back. What was your favorite event? You uh, had to choose one event. I mean, my favorite was probably the home run derby. Yeah. Like it was just fun. Yeah. You know, it's, it was reminiscent of, you know, the high school days of, of, of being under the, the fact that you got the lights on for that yeah. made all the difference in the world. If we were doing that at two in the afternoon, it wouldn't have been the same event, yeah. but um, that was so much fun. And I was, that's probably the one that I was most excited about. Cause I was like, I might be able to do some damage in this yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, that was, that was kind of my thing growing up was baseball. And, yeah. um, uh, so I got to say home run derby was my favorite golf is just, it, it was, it was so much fun to, honestly, I said it already, but that tracker that made it a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I don't know that there was a bad event quite honestly, cool. uh, but I'm going to say, I'll, I'll round out the top three here. Um, third one was probably poker. Yeah. Um, more from the aspect of the social, mm -hmm. uh, the social part of it where, you know, uh, I got to sit next to Donnie for most of the night, which, you know, I've known Donnie forever and, um, but not, it, it's always been through you. And yeah. so, um, it was fun to be able to sit down at that table and, and just hang out with the dudes there, Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> there was, we had uh, we had fireworks early. We had, I think it was the second hand, and we had people going all in. It's like, oh my goodness, this is. <laughs> uh, who was it? it was Snar, I think. Um, oh, okay. He came in and he's. Uh, I I got the feeling that Snar plays a lot of poker, and um, the way that he was playing, ninety nine percent of people would have folded, 
that this was the one percent. <laughs> he got he got put out early, which I think the rest of us were probably lucky for because if he would kept playing, I think he would have won. <laughs> yeah. We got that one started late, so I think there was a little bit of some people were like, "Oh, I'm tired. Like, let's just go super aggressive here and see what happens." Uh, I think it got the best of me towards the end. Yeah. I uh, I think I Donnie actually for as much as I said I enjoyed sitting next to him, I'm pretty sure he put me out. Yeah. So, um, but uh, you know it. That's all part of it, though. Yeah, you know that's it's that's the endurance part is mental endurance. Yeah, we usually have some sort of a mental event there. So poker was that this year. Yeah. We've done trivia. That's a lot like Jeopardy. So the teams oh, have buzzers and they actually like buzz in, and we have <sighs> categories and everything that goes in there. That could be fun. So that one, that one's a lot of fun. So yeah, definitely a mental aspect. And then again, so we have events where it's all four of you are playing. So you think golf, volleyball, basketball, all four are playing. We have events where it's two on two. So you think of like spike ball and pickleball. <clears throat> and then we have events that are by yourself, right? And that was yeah. poker was the example of that. And then the last one where you combine with another team, but yeah. kind of a little bit of a wrinkle in all of it. Yeah. No, I think that it the the formatting was really cool. Um, would there – I'm actually going to ask you a couple of questions oh. here because I'm kind of curious. Um, would you bring back any sports or would you replace any sports? Um, I try to bring in a, at least one new sport every time. So in this one, this was the first time that we have done the Home Run Derby. And it's the first time that we've done dodgeball at man games. So, oh, cool. Yeah, so every time, again, like in the previous man games, we did trivia. And so I switched out trivia with poker. And so mm-hmm. we just I try to rotate things. It seems like spike ball, we have a really good partner with Utah Round Net. So yeah. they're here in Utah, and they help provide all the nets and then all kinds of the supplies and help around the rules and all of that stuff. And spike ball is something that's relatively easy to set up anywhere. Yeah. So we don't have to reserve anything. Mm-hmm. So spike ball has kind of been in all of them. Pickleball has been in all of them. Golf is just a staple and then mm-hmm. some form of basketball event. So this one was three on three. We've done four on four. We've done a two ball, which is like a shooting contest that's in a minute. You, you would do two ball yeah, national we did, championship. Yeah, we did do two ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, so two ball was a lot of fun. Um, what else? In the very first one, we did like ping pong. We've done video games. So we did like a Halo tournament that has happened with video like games. Like Halo 1, like way back, throw it all um, the way. I want to say it was like Halo 2 or 3. You need to, We need to go all the way back to Halo 1. Yeah, yeah. Right. That that's the only one I can play. I'm, I know. I'm terrible at that if one. We do the other ones, I am in big trouble. It's really yeah. bad. Yeah. So yeah. we've done like video games. Um yeah, I think there are some other s- events that we're gonna throw in there. So we did a relay race at Girl Games that it was actually oh. really cool. So the girls one leg of it they started and they ran like a hundred yards across a field and then there were cornhole boards and they had four attempts to get a cornhole. Oh, and that's cool. as soon as they made it, they could move on to the next leg. And if they didn't make it, then they had to do like 10 jumping jacks and then they could move on. And then they had the little carts. You remember in elementary school, like the little square carts you'd yes. sit on? Yeah. And so you'd go flying across the yeah, gym yeah. floor. Yeah. So well, they'd sit on that. And then they had to run like another, it was probably like 120 yards around those baseball diamonds. So they had to go <laughs> down the baseball diamond and turn. And then the next leg, they'd run another 100 yards. And then they had the Frisbee golf hole. And so they would have to throw four Frisbee go- or three Frisbee discs. As soon uh-huh. as you made it, you could move on if you didn't jumping jacks. And then they'd okay. run over to the next leg, which was at the basketball court. And they had to shoot a free throw. If they made it, they could move on. If they missed it, then they just had to make a shot. It could be a layup, whatever. And then from there, they did it all again. So they oh, just, man. everybody rotated one spot. And so they did two laps. That's cool. So it was intense. Yeah. But I want to get like a big, one of the big bouncy obstacle courses. I think that would oh, be a yes. fun event. Yes. That, I mean, it's definitely going to pop. So by the insurance policy. But <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I, that would be like a leg of it, right? Yeah. So one person has to go through that. Oh, that'd be fun. I've wanted to do like hatchet throwing. I think that drone racing would be fun to implement into this. So Drone you, racing? Yeah. So you get like hula hoops and you can either put them on poles or you can get like helium balloons and then send them up so that the the yeah. hula hoops are sitting up in the sky and then you just get like these cheap drones and you can fly through them. That is wild. Yeah. So we got a lot of ideas of events that we want to throw in there, but there's usually a staple of golf. Um, some people have asked like to shorten it because it does take a long time. And again, there's a lot of variables in there, but the courses in general won't let you do a shotgun start with yeah. you're only doing nine. And if you only have a certain number of players, so 18 holes is always a scramble is usually what we do. Yeah. You have to do, I think I can, I think it's 50, I have to have minimum of 50 players to do a shotgun start. Um, Mountaindale is unbelievable to work with, and they let us get it because we only had 32 players for this one. So they let us. Oh, wow. It's it's early in the morning, but they they were great. So they worked with us with that. That's, Other courses won't. But, yep, I've tried. Yes. So, <laughs> so they're That's, fantastic. Um, we haven't done, the very first one we did a three-point contest. 
Oh, that's cool. So I went to Shields. This is super frustrating. So I went to Shields once, and they had the basketballs out, and then they had racks that are just like the racks that you would see in like a three-point oh, contest. Oh, that's great, yeah. And so I went up to the guy, and they didn't have prices. I was like, hey, are these for, sh- for sale? And he said, let me go check in the back. Goes in the back, comes out. Yeah, they're for sale. Like, great, how much? Yeah. I don't know. Let me go check. <laughs> so he goes in the back again. He comes back out, and he's like, they're forty nine fifty bucks. And so I was like, how many do you have? I don't know. Let me go check. And so he goes back again, <laughs> comes out. He's like, we got five, and five is perfect That's for a three exactly point contest. Need, yeah. That's what you need. And so, I like, I'll take all of them. And yeah. I was like, Let, let's do this. And so, he's like, great, go down to the cash register. You just need to give them this skew, and then you can get them, and they'll pick them up in the back. I had my truck. I was all ready to go, super pumped. So, I go down there, give them the skew, and then the person calls, and he's like, oh, so they, they told you the wrong thing. It's not 50 bucks, it's like $190 per thing. And so, I was like, oh, <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm that, not really ready for that yeah, yet. Yeah, that but, got more expensive. Yeah, I mean, but, you could get can't really move it i was just trying to think yeah. like if you had like two of them and you have somebody go and reload it yeah <laughs> i don't yeah. know but well there's a legitimacy that i hope you felt that this one like i want it to feel legit right i don't want to feel oh, like yeah. there i and we can throw stuff together and i think that everybody would be would be fine with that but i really like the idea of like you get there everything is set up everything runs yeah like how you would expect it to do and what you've seen on tv to a yeah. certain extent so well it does and that's that does make a big difference if it was if it was misrun uh that would be a hard a really really hard weekend yeah. to get through because there's everyone is so physically trained yeah that if there was mental frustration on top of it outside of losing then I'm pretty sure I would have just been like okay and I'm going home yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah. you know running running correctly and running smoothly is essential yeah so yeah I can I can understand where you maybe don't risk hitting somebody with the you know card yeah. as it's going around <laughs> so <laughs> what events would you want to see there. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't play soccer, but I think something in the lines of soccer could be mm-hmm. fun. Um, especially that I think they have – where we played dodgeball was basically yeah. an indoor soccer court. Yeah, right? they usually have other fields there that are redoing the turf fields there. So. Yeah, uh, that could be really cool. Um, We've done ultimate frisbee. Um, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, I sustained the worst injury of my entire life playing ultimate frisbee. But, yeah. you know, that's – if happens. you were exhausted playing the sports we did, if you throw ultimate frisbee in there, I mean that sport that kills is stri- you. Yeah, that's straight running. Yeah, um, kickball. Kickball is the one that we want to do. Kickball. Uh, kickball. So I played in a kickball league recently. <laughs> okay. Have you tried to catch a kickball? Not recently. In like the last fifteen years. No. So I would consider myself fairly athletic. Mm-hmm. I think that I was going to be okay at this, and um, so I show up to this kick- kickball league, and I mean it's. You know, it's a goofy beer league type of thing, and they, you know, they uh, were playing on a baseball field, um, and I was just I was like, I don't know where to go. There's not positions. Nobody's playing shortstop, you know. <laughs> yeah. And so I just kind of went out into the outfield, and and like first pitch, somebody kicked it right to me. I'm thinking, perfect, I got this. I got to catch it. It bounced off my chest so hard, <laughs> like I was it, I felt like I was gonna get knocked out by this thing. So more challenging than you think. So I that experienced that be... with dodgeball. I was like, oh, I was dominant in dodgeball when I was in elementary school. Yeah. And then I just got wrecked. Like, just immediately, people are just pegging me. Was... I did. Yeah, I did, too. I had my f- the first round. Um, our first game was fun. Yeah. That, was, that was the one where we uh, we won that. Peyton hit. Uh, who did he hit in? Was it, was it JD? I know that those two were still in it. I think it was JD. Yeah. 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 And um, Peyton's sneaky, too. He's a... He's got an arm on him. Yeah. Like I grew up playing baseball with Peyton. Yeah. So I kind of knew, I was like, even though he's injured, he's going to show up right now. <laughs> and so uh, he actually, and even in high school, uh, they called him back. The gym coach called him back the year after high school because there were some kids that the gym coach maybe didn't like all that much to go play dodgeball against. <laughs> so awesome. It's like, oh man. But that was, that was super fun. Um, catching those was hard though. Yes. Uh, I, Two games, I tried to catch it, and that's what the reason I got out. I yep. should have been able to catch it. Just, I'm going to get out of the way next time. So yeah. I've learned. I'm going to get a ball. I'm going to knock him away, and I'm, just, I'm not going to catch it. Just yeah, just yeah it was it a lot is. harder than yeah. I thought it would be. Yeah. I was pretty confident in myself, and I got humbled. Uh, I I also think I might have thrown my shoulder out the first <laughs> throw. Like I felt it like all through my arm Oh, here. it was tingly. Yeah, like yeah. All the blood just rushes to the end of your hand. And, yeah. But I got up there, and it was – I can't even remember who I was – Throwing it out. I hit him, which was great, but 
I threw it one time and I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> ah, I should have stretched. Long ball like is yeah. not a thing anymore. <laughs> that is so <laughs> but, funny. Yeah, it was great. Well, this is that's that's so fun. Um, I want to get back into kind of you personally and specifically real estate. So I said this at Man Games, but you got our family into our first house. I think that's something that's so hard for people in general in business is when they sponsor is how do you let people know what you do and who you can help, right? A lot of times you see sponsors, they talk about themselves, I'm this, I'm that, I'm whatever, right? Mm -hmm. My marketing background kind of lends it to where, as an example, there was an attorney, a good friend of mine, he's like, I'm an attorney, throws out these big words, and I was like, I don't know what that means. Yeah. And so I was like, how would I be able to work with you? He's like, oh, and then he explains it. And I was like, oh, that's great. I know exactly what I would need you for now, right? And so I think that for anyone listening, there's a residential real estate. You got us into our first house. I was scared as could be. Again, it's a huge decision if you haven't done it before. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of anxiety. You have your spouse. And is are you, from my perspective, am I providing the house that my spouse is happy with? And, sure. And then our kids. And you just made that so easy. And you made that such a relief for me personally that everything ran nice and smooth. You told me what was going to happen. You told me what was coming. If anything got changed or hurdles or timelines or deadlines, you were there. So I am forever grateful to you for that. We are in a different house than that first one. It was a it was just a for sale by owner, so we didn't use you for that one. But No, but you I did see. reach out to me, and you told me the exactly. entire time. And yeah. uh, I think even at the time, you told me the deal that you were going to get on this house. I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, go for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, Absolutely, you should make that work. Yeah. And, and, and that's really what it's about, though. That's... Uh, that's the difference is what I get to do in my in my job is I get to help people through what for most people is the largest purchase that they're ever going to make. Yeah. Um, it's very emotional and it can also set you up for financial success or ruin. Yeah. You know, there's uh there's a lot of different ways that you can do very, very, very well um yeah. in in real estate and in building a portfolio. And um, you know, I've I've been lucky, so I got in uh I've been agent for nine years now. Why did you, so you were in the corporate world. Why did you start in real estate? What, what made uh, you go there? Sure. So my, uh, my background, so I was working at Eagle Logistics. Um, I was a freight broker at the time. It was a, you know, I took the highest paying salary I could find out of college that um, was in sales. I always you know knew I wanted to be in sales. I'd been in it for a long time. Um, and I was in it and I, I climbed the ladder and like four months and it's like, well, that's as high as I can get in sales. I'm going, are you serious? That's, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Now I just get to do this forever. Um, and at the time I was in, uh, I was in a program, it was a personal development program. It was this grueling nine month program where we're meeting every Friday night. And I don't know why I put myself through these. Actually I do. My wife is a better person than me and she signed me up for it. So, <laughs> um, and I, uh, I met a good friend of mine who got me into real estate. He and his family, um, we actually did a few of the courses together and then uh, the small group that did the, the extended one, he was part of it. Mm -hmm. And so um, his name's Matt Snade. He got me into real estate with the move group. They were doing um, a lot of flips and it was, it just looked like fun, quite yeah. honestly, you know, I uh, didn't know exactly how I was going to get involved in real estate. I just knew that what I was doing was boring. Um, I did not like working for somebody else. Uh, I had, I had, you know, I, talked with a, a lot of different people about, you know, what's the difference of being self-employed or the, you know, having a stable paycheck, everything like that. And there's certainly pluses and minuses with it. Um, but I just decided I wanted to take a bet on myself. Um, and at the time it was, it was a perfect time to do it. And, uh, I, there's two conversations that kind of pushed me into it. Um, the first one was with my wife, um, because, you know, I was leaving, I was fairly young and I was, I had a six figure job and I was going to leave it. Yeah. So, well, why? <laughs> you know, yeah. there's a lot of people that like that's that's what everyone tries to get. And I was like, well, yeah, but it doesn't mean I'm not happy. I'm not I'm not content. I'm, you know, I was one of those guys that I had to be there from seven to four. Yeah. And I was walking around that building probably fifteen times a day because I I'd get all my stuff done in three hours. Like, yeah. well, now what? Yeah. You know, it's just so it, it didn't it wasn't conducive to you know, my self-diagnosed ADD and everything else. <laughs> and so, um, so when I got to, uh, I was talking with uh, my buddy, Matt, and I was kind of telling him all my frustrations and he just said, well, you want to try and sell houses with me? Like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, That's awesome. and honestly, 
it was it was not much more complicated than that. Yeah. Um, and and I got into it, and they're uh, they were a great great start for me. There was it was a team. They taught me a lot of things. Um, they they were flipping homes, and so I I'd go into their homes that they had done this masterful you know job of remodeling it on. Uh, I look like I know exactly what I'm doing because I'm in this beautiful house representing it. I didn't know anything at the yeah. time, but uh, you know, I was able to to build a pretty good client base based off of uh, open houses and just people I knew. And um, I've been very fortunate; people have been just good to me. You know, cool. it's, I've had I've had way more friends and family use me than I probably deserve, yeah. and so it's uh, it, it's it was really it was an easy transition. Um, yeah. When I started, I was actually. Uh, I was going to be his mom's assistant, and I think I did that for all of about three weeks. And I mm. realized, no, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm not a good assistant, and I'm I'm not good for you, and this isn't good for me. Yeah. And so I just kind of jumped in and said, okay, I better get a deal pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I got lucky within that first month. I had uh, you know a double sided uh, buyer seller deal, and um, at the time that was the most that was the largest check I'd ever seen. And there was two of them. Wow. I was like this, this could be okay. Like, That's awesome. This could work. You know, and so. Um, from there, I've just kind of, uh, you know, I've, uh, I'm started on a team, uh, and then that team kind of, we one by one kind of just moved in different directions. Um, they went in a, they kind of changed their business model. And so I changed mine and, um, I was by myself for a while. Uh, I've been in a few different brokerages. Um, and what then, goes into that decision with brokerages? Cause you know, I know you've moved, I know several yeah. people in this industry too, and they kind of like hop around and same with loan officers, right? They kind of like hop around. What, what goes sure. into that decision? Um, a lot of it is, uh, I mean, there's, there's two different ways to look at it. Um, you can look at it for what am I going to get for what I'm paying or, uh, how can I pay the absolute least? Mm -hmm. uh, I think, and I, and I've tried both. Um, you know, I started my, my career with Windermere and, and every brokerage I've been at has been great. They've all had their pluses and minuses. Everything's, you know, every company is going to have that. Yeah. Um, when I started with Windermere, it was more of a boutique brokerage. I think there was like 70 or something agents. Um, it grew really, really fast, which, you know, they do a great job of marketing and of, uh, of I think they purchased a few brokerages. And uh, the guy that owns that, his name's Grady Kohler. He's he's a genius. You know, mm -hmm. he, he does very, very well at running that. Um, and at the time uh, when I went on to my own, I wanted to see, okay, what is it? Can I do all of this myself? Yeah. And so I considered just – creating a brokerage, um, you know, getting my broker's license and doing that and um, kind of decided that's that's more work than more back-end work, which uh, is fine. I could do it, but it's not really the highest and best use of my time. Yeah. And so for me personally, I'll just kind of tell you, the only really way I can do it is tell you my story with it, right? And so um, so I found, uh, went and found a brokerage that was more of a transaction based brokerage it's you know 4.99 a transaction type of thing instead of a a set percentage which is quite a bit cheaper than one of the other ones um that was signature real estate uh, with mark handy mm -hmm. and uh and mark is a just phenomenal guy so i called mark um i knew him from uh when i worked at excel fitness way back in the day i used to make him protein shakes you know <laughs> <laughs> and so um i called him and he was awesome he said yeah of course i remember you i've kind of followed your career and i went over there um and it was a great uh Honestly, it's a, it's a great setup for if that's if that's the business model that you're looking for. Honestly, I recommend. I still send people to Signature that are getting started. It's a great yeah. place for new agents um, because there's not a whole lot of overhead. Uh, they have really really wonderful classes. They have systems to teach people, um, which was awesome. The entire time I was there, it was I loved it. You know, and, yeah. and Mark's a great guy. I, I can't. I could talk about him all day long. He's <laughs> he's one of my favorite. We'll have to bring there. him on here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He's uh, he actually played ball against Mike Mundy. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So he played it uh, at BYU and he, um, so that was kind of fun too. Cause it was like, you know, this is my dad's generation type yeah. of thing. And so, uh, and so after, um, I was there for a while and then, uh, my buddy, Sean, um, mm -hmm. one of my you know very best friends in the world, uh, he and I, he worked at the move group with me for a while at Windermere. Um, and, and at the time I think he had asked me before if, I wanted to uh, come and join him, and <laughs> my young foolish self said, "No, I'm not going to come work for you. You're my friend." Like, <laughs> you know, probably not the right move at the time because he's an amazing real estate agent, and probably would have been very profitable to work for him. But the second time that came around, that option, um, I, I had to figure out how to say yes to it that time. Yeah. And so, um, which is a really interesting balancing act because uh, 
And that was one of the conversations that he and I had was, okay, I want to do this. Um, how do we do this without ruining our friendships? Yeah. Because he is, you know, his kids are my kids' best friends. Mm -hmm. His wife is probably my wife's best friend, and, and he's one of mine. And I'm like, okay, this we've got a really good thing going. I don't want to screw it up. But also, this could be beautiful, you know, if we put yeah. it together. And Because uh, it happens a lot. A lot of times yeah. good friends go into business and then just – disagreements come up, money comes up and yeah. it doesn't work out. Oh, I've, I've seen it firsthand, yeah. you know, and I would never name any names and there's, there's always two sides to a story, the type of thing, but yeah, it's a real risk. Yeah. You know, you're, uh, and so we, we have a very unique relationship where it's not like everything's 100% perfect all the time, but we can, uh, we can call each other out. We yeah. can be honest with each other and we don't let things fester. Yeah. That's one of the biggest things is if there's something that's bothering either one of us, it's you got to put it on the table. Yeah. Um, and and honestly, uh, it has been a just absolutely beautiful business relationship. I mean, uh, I am I am ninety nine percent residential. Um, mm -hmm. He does. Sean does a ton. I mean, he does everything. He's just a man of about a million different hats. Yeah. But um, he uh, he does quite a bit of development. Um, a lot of multifamily. Uh, he owns Rude Cafe. Mm. Um, he is starting a coffee company right now. He is. He has a food truck. I mean, he's just. He's everywhere. If you wow. if you think of something that, you know, if he looks at it for twelve seconds, he's like, oh yeah, I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's just awesome. who he is, you know. Um, and so, uh, he and I have been together for about two years now. Um, and you ask about going into brokerages, what uh, uh, what goes into that decision? Um, at the time, we uh, – so I left Signature actually back to Windermere where I had left the first time. He was still there. And so, um, you know, he brought me back over and, and we were doing things there and it was fine. And um, we kind of came to that same point where it was like, all right, we want to um, – we do a lot of our own custom marketing. Uh, Sean, Sean did a ton of it, which – uh, just wasn't an ideal fit for the business model at Windermere. Um, it was we either need to offload this completely um, or w with being able to still keep our same brand, like our, yeah. you know, we've we've created somewhat of a somewhat of a unique brand there that um, if you just threw that into their system, that's I don't think they were going to be equipped to continue the same uh, same style that we had. Yeah. Um, and that was important to us. So we were either going to same thing, start our own, um, or Sean kind of threw out there. He's like, why don't we just go talk to some of the biggest brokerages out there? And, um, I think, you know, the, when you think luxury real estate, you think Sotheby's, you know, you think that's, that's kind of where I'd like to be. Um, I was going to say that because it's one of those things where you don't notice something until you notice it. So yeah. like, right, like a car, like, Oh, I've never seen this car before. And I think it's awesome. And then you start to notice it everywhere. I notice Sotheby's everywhere now, and it's usually in high-end places, yeah. what I've noticed. There's a high percentage, and they're everywhere, but like when I think of like the park cities, I think of like Midway, I think of these places where I would like to end up. It seems like it's always Sotheby's. It, yeah. I mean, the Wasatch Back Sotheby's is just a monster brokerage. Yeah. I mean, they the the amount of you know multi-multi-million dollar listings that they have in their arsenal, it's – it's sickening. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I see the sales reports and I see what, it's like, I'm sorry, you, you closed a hundred million dollars last week. Like wow. what? <laughs> yeah. And, and that was part of the appeal though. Not, not only just from a shiny object syndrome, right. But, um, there's a reason that they operate that way. Um, it is, uh, it's a much more expensive brokerage than I've ever been at. And mm -hmm. so we had to think about this long and hard. We had to, you know, really, uh, say, okay, how much are we going to have to increase our business to be able to make the same amount of money? And we went over it. And um, not only that, but there's the aspect of uh, of quality of life mm -hmm. um, and and proximity to really good agents. Yeah. And uh, we went on a tour. Uh, I knew I knew the broker there, mm -hmm. Ryan Kirkham, um, great guy. He's been you know president of the board before. Um, Adam. Is his brother? I know Adam. Adam's actually uh, the president elect. He's going to be the president this year. So, um, and I called. Uh, I called him up and I just said, "Hey Ryan, you know, me and Sean are kind of considering changing brokerages. Do you have time to sit down?" Um, he's like, "Oh yeah, come on in." And you know, I went and talked with him, and he's just he's the nicest guy. If you ever meet, you know, any of the Kirkhams, they're fantastic people. Yeah. And um, 
and Ryan took us on, you know, we sat down, talked about the brokerage and everything like that, which I'll get into that conversation. But uh, one of the most important parts that stood out to me in that first initial meeting was he said, okay, I just kind of want to give you a tour of the office. And I'm, I'm going around and I'm looking at all the name plates and all these plaques. I'm like, I know every single one of these names. Like mm. this is this is an office full of of people that actually are making moves in real estate. Yeah. You know, they're the top producers. And it's like, you know, this is this is kind of where I want to be. Yeah. Um and the more I dug into it, I understand why. Uh it's uh Sotheby's is gr- it's just it's a great fit for us. It really is. Um their marketing team is it's I don't think it has a rival in the state. What I mean, goes into that? Like, because marketing is huge. There's so many different ways you can take marketing. So, from a real estate perspective, and you're a real estate agent, and your brokerage is providing marketing, what does that look like? Um, it's uh, the most important part to the consumer is reach. It's uh, how is your property going to get out there? How and who are you going to put your property in front of? Mm-hmm. Um, the syndication that they have is. Uh, I could try for years to match that and not be able to do what they're doing. Is that yeah. an email list? Is that a it's not, Facebook it, following? It's is that more a... of the like lux- they have the partnerships that they have uh, mm-hmm. with companies like Luxury Real Estate, um, and and honestly the affiliates uh, of Sotheby's affiliates throughout the world. I mean, Sotheby's was founded in I don't know the 1800s as a brokerage house. They they still do, you know you think the Sotheby's auctions yeah. you're gonna go see a Picasso get auctioned off. It's it's at a Sotheby's auction, yeah. and that's. You know, that's what they were founded upon. Um, and they they have so – the network that they have built um, with just the phenomenal marketing – the marketing director is unreal. Yeah. I mean, she is uh, – the type of thing she comes up with just sitting down. I mean, it's kind of reminiscent of you, actually. Mm. It, it's, it, it is just shocking the way that, that their brains work. It's like I never would have come up with that strategy to try and sell this house. Like, um, you're gonna put a ballerina in this video <laughs> jumping into a pool? Like, what? Yeah. It's crazy. And then you see the video after, and you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, that was unbelievable. And like that, that wasn't the dripping wet ballerina that I thought it was going to be. Right. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah. And it was uh, on top of just their reach. They have. Um, the marketing department, when I'm asking for flyers to be made or I'm asking for, uh, you know, just uh, any any of the, the, the countless tasks that go into getting a listing ready, they respond within 24 hours. Mm-hmm. I was told it would be like, yeah, it won't be longer than 24 hours. It's like two hours. Wow. And I'm getting drafts back. And, and before we met with – before we even got on board, they set a meeting and say, okay – uh, we're going to present some styles to you. Uh, pick your styles. We want this to, to match your brand. So we were able to take our same unique brand, our same unique style, and put that into this marketing. And then it's just a plug and play. That's saved. The, everybody in the marketing department is briefed on each individual agent of how they want their marketing to look. Wow. And it, it's that is just not something you get anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, mainly because the other brokerages probably can't afford it. Yeah. You know, There's a reason it's more expensive because you are getting the best. Yeah. Um, and that's that was really important to us, and it became just enormously clear that it was like, okay, there's there is a reason there are so many top performing agents at this brokerage is because they take so much so much on, and they're so good at what they do. I can focus on doing what I'm good at, yeah. which is getting out there and talking to people. Like I, I don't have to worry about the transaction coordination side of it. Yeah. Um. I know my my TC. Debbie, who is retiring and breaking my heart, and <laughs> Debbie, but um, you know, I, we've I know that their entire staff is amazing. I don't have to worry about the back end paperwork. I know it's all taken care of. I still see it. You know, yeah. it's it's not like I'm just closing my eyes and blindly trusting this stuff. But it's it's on just complete autopilot that is flawless. How does that translate to a buyer or seller? Right, like why should a buyer or seller be worried about that with Sotheby's? Versus any other brokerage, uh, there's a lot more behind the scenes stuff than people realize in real estate. Um, you know, making sure that earnest money gets deposited at the correct time, making sure that you have the uh, the correct wiring instructions, making sure you know all these all these little fine minute details that when you're buying a house, it feels like you're drinking from a fire hose. Yeah, and so you know, I didn't it. it 
and was probably two years into real estate before I realized that because I hadn't even bought my own house yet. <laughs> you know, uh, I was somebody should have told me you needed to uh, qualify before being self employed. So, um, but that's fine. Yeah. And so, you know, when you're when you're actually in that, it's so important to have uh, a team behind you that that you can trust. And um, most of the top performing agents, I mean, it really is the eighty twenty rule. Yeah, you know, sure. there's the the twenty percent of the agents do. It's probably closer to 90, 10, quite honestly. Mm. But, and so there's, when there's that much going on, you have to have checks and balances um, because you're not talking about, you know, oh man, I'm so sorry about that. And a phone call to apologize to somebody. No, if you make a mistake, it's tens of thousands of dollars. Yeah. You know, it can cost people their entire livelihood. And so, and their dream house, right? Like there's a lot of emotional investment that goes into that. Yeah. I mean, and that doesn't come back. No. Let me tell you that real quick is that it's, you know, if you are if you are asking somebody to trust you with their literally the way that the rest of the life is going to go. Huh. Uh, I just don't see how you can leave anything up to risk. Yeah. You know, and so and and that's that's the sense that I get at Sotheby's. And that's and I've been there for just over a year now and um it's just, it, it is run like a well-oiled machine. Thomas Wright is an animal. I've never seen anybody in my life that works harder than this man. Um, but he he knows how to build a company. He knows how to put the right people in the right positions. Um, the weekly sales meetings that we have are, I mean, there's 150 to 250 agents on this at a time. And, I mean, they're phenomenal. Mm. It's I've been in the business for, you know, nine years. I I learn something new every single week. Mm. It's like that's – I thought I knew most things. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've seen – there's not a whole lot of scenarios out there that surprise me anymore. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's the other – one of the other really, really big reasons that we went over to Sotheby's is their uh, in-house counsel. Mm. Um, his name's Shane Norris. He is just an absolute stud. I would never want to be on the other side of a, of a case against Shane. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I called him – Yesterday, actually, mm-hmm. or, yeah, yeah, I talked with him just because there was a situation that came up that I'd never dealt with before. I was like, Shane, is this legal? Am I am I breaking the law right now? And he cleared everything up. He said, Well, you might have, but this is the way to do it. Yeah, and and so just having that behind me, um, it makes me more confident. Yeah, you know, it makes me more confident and be able to provide that premium product that that people need and. It's really interesting timing. I mean, the last two years, uh, we all know what's happened in the real estate market. I yeah. mean, unprecedented growth. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing the last 12 months, it's 19% up. I think there was a period where it was like 28% growth in one 12-month period. Wow. That's insane. You know, I was I was genuinely tempted to just list my house at a stupid number to see what would happen, and I think it probably would have sold. You probably would have gotten it. Yeah. I mean, I was having people... It was like there the was, day of. It was multiple offers on million-dollar oh, yeah. homes. Yeah. yeah. And you know, multiple offers. I was in multiple offer situations on $9 million homes. Jeez. Like, really? That would have taken two years and, you know, all this time to sell. And it's been on for one week, and I'm in a multiple offer situation? Yeah. Like, what is happening right yeah. now? And, um, no, it, but for, you know, the the – major population which is you know under a million dollar home used to be anyway i don't know <laughs> there's a lot more million dollar homes out there than there used to be but um you know for your your four to eight hundred thousand um which is a lot of you know that's that's a pretty pretty normal home in utah these days um you were getting a honestly a house that was not that great and you're having to go fifteen twenty thousand dollars over asking price um I I never had anybody pay over appraisal value, which I'm very proud of. I'm not nice. gonna lie. That was one thing where I was like, okay, I just I can't stomach that. You yeah. know, and unless you are telling me that you are guaranteeing to stay in this house for five years or more, I just have a hard time with you going over appraisal value. Yeah. It's not I don't love it. Um Well and now thank goodness, right? Yeah. I mean it's starting to correct itself. I think the market has to correct itself to a certain extent. It's still high demand, but Yeah, and you know, it's really interesting. I I hesitate to predict the future because there's so much that goes into this, but um, everything that I've seen, I just, I try and look at economists because there's people out there that study this all day and night that are a lot smarter than I am. Like, okay, great. I'm going to read your stuff. And uh, the Utah always, 
Salt Lake in general, it outperforms the rest of the country. We're kind of, we're in a very sheltered little bubble here that's yeah. just, we're lucky. You know, it's, it used to be a well-kept secret. I don't think it's that well-kept anymore, yeah. but uh, if I can do anything about it, it's not going to be well-kept. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's uh, all these predictions that I'm seeing, I'm seeing anything from a uh, basically like a 7% gain over the next 12 months to a 5% loss on values. Um, I tend to think things are going a little bit more stagnant and really a lot of it is going to have to do with interest rates. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the biggest, you know, the biggest thing that's, that's happened over the last, you know, six ish months. I think April 18th was the high, um, Mm -hmm. and in the market and then things kind of started teetering off a little bit Yeah, and, uh, seeing an interest rate where a year and a half ago you could have been under 4%. Now it's like, I'm at seven. Yeah. That's a big change. Yeah, that means those buyers that didn't buy that were looking at eight hundred thousand dollars houses now they're looking at six hundred thousand dollars houses. Yeah, and that is hard to stomach. Yeah, and so you're seeing a lot of st- uh, a lot of stagnant people in the industry right now, where they either just feel be- beat down, mm-hmm. uh, don't want to do work with the interest rate, um, or they just they want to wait it out and see what happens. And that's a lot of I can't blame them. Yeah. If you're if you're not forced to make a move right now, there's always a good like there's never going to be a time where you can't make a good move. Yeah. It's never going to be impossible. You know, right now there's all, all kinds of different project products that you can use, um, such as a two one buy down. Like what's that to argue for interest rates? So it is um, a two one buy down is let's say you got approved uh, for a house at a seven point five percent interest rate. Um, you can prepay. It's usually about fifteen grand. Um, but right now you're getting a lot of people to uh, give a seller credit for it where it's like, okay, cool. I want, I'm going to agree to this purchase price, but I want a $15,000 credit towards my rate buy down. Mm -hmm. Um, $15,000 will be prepaid. And then the first year of the mortgage, instead of seven and a half, you are at five and a half. Mm. Uh, Year number two, you're going to be at six and a half. Year number three, you're actually at your seven and a half. So the theory behind it is that uh, sometime in the next two years, there's going to be another refinance boom. Um, Mm. And you can refinance out of that. And any of those funds that weren't used, so let's say you you only had it for one year, um, it's the majority of them are going to be used in the first year because it's 2%, not one. Mm. But say of that $15,000, only 10,000 of it was used in the first year. And you refinance at day 365. You're going to get a $5,000 credit back. Mm. Um, So there's... I mean, there's, there's a lot of ways around it. Um, it is still kind of betting on the future, yeah. seeing what's going to happen. Um, uh, to the everything that I can see, you know, people, the Fed's raising interest rates right now to battle inflation. Yeah. Um, that is, that is exactly, it's a tool. Yeah. It is a tool used because they want people to stop spending money and they're going to raise interest rates until people stop spending money. And then inflation goes down, yeah. and then interest rates will come back down. That's the thought, right? Yeah. Um, how long is that going to take? I don't know. You know. Yeah. Well, and we were. I was on a podcast with some financial advisors, and they were say they had all these charts and stuff. They said it's working, right? We're kind of we're there. It, it's just started. We working. don't feel. I mean, yeah. we feel the pain, mm-hmm. but we we're going to have to feel a little bit of pain. And I think yeah. that a lot with real estate as well as the stock market. I think there's similarities of where, like, oh, I want to I want to time this just right so that I sell my mm-hmm. house at the highest possible point, and then I buy when everything crashes. And it's like, well, timing yeah. that is really hard to do. It is hard to do. And and I wish more people would look at it as, I want to be at the top 20% and the bottom 20%. Yeah. That gives you so much more you know, flexibility and um, gives you so much more room <laughs> yeah. to be able to – I don't have to wait until the exact perfect day. Yeah. Because if you do that, chances are you're going to wait too long and it's going to be gone. Yeah. Um, and so that's, you know, that's kind of the the double-edged sword of timing the real estate market, right? It's, it's just, it's tough to do. Yeah. You know, the best out there uh, still can't do it perfectly, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting next two years. Um, the previous two years, it was anybody with a pulse could put a sign in the ground and sell a house. Yeah, selling a house was not hard. Um, picking the right offer out of fifteen was sometimes hard. Um, so that was where the value was for the last couple of years was trying to negotiate for getting the best offer. And it was sometimes it wasn't the highest. Yeah, you know, if people were making it, you know, where I'm, I'm going to go a hundred thousand dollars over the appraisal value, but it's contingent upon the financing and appraisal 
like that's a worthless offer. Yeah. Like, no. And yeah. there's a lot of people that didn't understand that. Um, this is one of the reasons I'm really happy to be back at Sotheby's now is because uh, real estate agents are starting to become a lot more valuable. Mm. It's harder to sell a home though. Um, and it's it's been a tough uh, tough little bit here trying to explain to sellers that they missed the boat. Yeah. Nobody likes to hear that. Yeah. You know, and it's like, well, I'm I'm sorry. It's it's not 2021 anymore. Yeah. We are in the market isn't it's not evolving. It's not shifting. It has shifted. Yeah. And we are not in the same market anymore. Um, I mean, for instance, I think I have five listings active right now. Uh, I haven't had five listings active in the last two years because they go so quick. Yeah. And, and that's just, that's a sign of the market. Um, and it's actually a good thing for buyers. Uh, it's, it's a much better time to buy. Uh, I mean, easier time to buy a house right now than it was last year. Well, people if you're competing getting, against 15 oh people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, and I, I heard crazy stories too, where they're like, yeah, we're not going to do our deal, due diligence. We're not going to do all this stuff. And yeah, I mean, people were losing we're, money. Yeah. People yeah. were walking away from tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and unfortunately the same thing is happening with, with builds right now because, People would put something under contract and they can't lock in their interest rate. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh, that payment is $1,200 more than I thought it was going to be. Mm. And I have $50,000 in deposits. It's not refundable. That sucks. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to work. I haven't I haven't had any of those, thank goodness. Yeah. But um, what, a thought came to mind too, and I'm sorry to derail the train here, but there are entities out there that are saying like, you don't need a real estate agent. Like, they're, they're yeah. making way too much commission on stuff. Why do you need that? Just use an app or use something else. How do you combat that? Um, I think that there's always going to be that aspect. There's always going to be uh, the the right situation where if an agent can't bring value to the transaction, they shouldn't be involved. Yeah. Um, like, quite honestly, I think I told you don't use me on this. Like in your yeah. transaction yeah. of your house, uh, I couldn't add anything there. You already had it lined up. It's like, but I still, like, it was nice that you yeah. still were able to share your thoughts and, like, hey, look sure. for this, look for that, even though you weren't getting anything out of it. So yeah. thank you for that. Oh, of course. But that's that's part of it, though, is I'm not necessarily always trying to combat that um, because I don't have to. Mm -hmm. It's, quite honestly, the the clients that I have um, that if there's, a, if, if there's a right situation for me to be involved, I'm going to be involved. If there's a situation where I can spend five minutes and say, this is what you should do. And it's going to save you $30,000 in commissions. I'm going to do that. And yeah. so, uh, the, the reality of it is most people don't know how to buy and sell a home. Um, and it's, it's not something that you can read one book and know how to do. Yeah. You know, if you haven't gone through it before, if you haven't been coached through it, um, it could work out just fine. Uh, you also could, be absolutely devastated. Yeah, you know, you could make some really, really, really large mistakes. Um, you know, I've, you hear the horror stories of people that uh, didn't use an agent and uh, didn't do their inspections correctly, were so over leveraged that they put everything they had into this dream house. Well, three weeks into it, they had to replace the roof. It's a twenty five thousand dollar roof because it's a huge house, and now they lost their house. Yeah, and in everything with it, and so yeah. you know, it, it's situations like that. Um, well, I don't know. I know specifically with ours on both houses, it was like you have the inspection, right? And love inspectors, but it's like every little thing that is there is like, oh, this is going to murder your family and children. It's yeah. like, really? Like it's a crack on my sidewalk. Like, no, it's it's probably going to be the end of the world. And so to have that agent too that could go through and say like, look, this really is a big problem. You're going to want to talk to the seller on this and this and this this is not something that's a big deal. Yeah. And, and and this might be something that we can negotiate. This isn't. And I remember even on our first house, right? Like I'm just this, I want to negotiate. I want to get it for as little as possible. What if we threw an offer like this? And you're like, look, Eric, like that's not realistic. We can try to go a little bit lower than what they're asking, but to throw out this stupid offer just isn't going to happen. And so looking back, I appreciate that, right? Because I'm just like all in the moment. And sure. But to have the agent with the experience that can say like, look, this will work out well for you. This one won't. It was, it was nice. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the value that a lot of real estate, it, on a perfect transaction, we don't add that much value. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I shouldn't say we don't add that much value. There's in marketing and everything else and finding the right buyer and all that, there's a lot of direction involved. But 
there's not very many perfect transactions out there. Yeah. Um, there, there's just inevitably something is going to come up. Um, and it's, it's in those situations. Uh, one, when those situations come up, emotions are running extremely high. Like yeah. You judge people off of uh, how they react in sports. I judge people off of <laughs> what happens when uh, things start going a little sideways in this transaction. Yeah. How are you going to react? Um, and it is my job to filter your reaction to how do we get you to where you want to be. Oh. And and that is not always an easy thing to do. Um, and so, you know, I, in those times, I'm more therapist than real estate agent. Yeah. Um, but it's also being able to know when to push back. It's when what is uh, what is the right thing to ask for. What what can you know. If I ask for everything on this entire inspection report to be uh, fixed, likely you're going to lose the deal. Yeah, and and then if there's nobody there to say no, they shouldn't fix all this because even on a brand new house, there's things that come up on an inspection. Yeah, that's you know, just the way it is, and uh, and it's it's the emotions that, uh, that you know it, it is insane the amount of uh, ownership that you feel over a property bef- as soon as it's under contract. Yeah. It's like, that's mine. And then there's something wrong with it. It's like, no, no way. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, uh, I think that's, that's one of the, the biggest parts. Um, the other part is just trying to, to navigate these crazy waters. Uh, we're going to be very valuable over the next few years. I can tell yeah. you that with, with changing markets. Um, because unless you're looking at it every single day, it's not going to be the same thing that you're used to. Even if you yeah. looked at it a week ago, you could list too high, which ultimately, you know, a lot of people think if you list too high, well, you can just come back down and do it. No, now you're too high with 30 days on the market or 45 days on the market and people aren't looking at your house because they assume there's something wrong with it. Yeah. Um, and, and that could, where if you would have just listed at the correct price to start with, uh, you might have net an extra fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Yeah. And um, so I shouldn't try to sell my house way higher than. I mean, you can't. <laughs> Not now. Please don't do that now. That would be. <laughs> I'm sorry, Eric. You missed the boat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, but uh, you know, it's uh, there's always going to be that uh, that stigma out there that real estate agents don't work very hard. Everyone has it. You yeah. know, I hear it all the time. Um, I also, and there are some that don't, right? There like are, there are bad yeah. apples in every bushel. Absolutely. That give everybody yeah. else a bad name. No. And I personally love when those people are in because I get to negotiate with them and they don't work very hard. Yeah. And my clients come out shining perfectly. You yeah. know, there's um, the other big thing that always gets asked is discounting my commissions, mm-hmm. um, not bringing somebody to the table. And uh, we talk about this all the time. Um, is there a right time to discount? Is there a time to uh, to to lower your fees? And um, quite honestly, I just don't. It's not yeah. something that I do um, because for a couple of different reasons. One, if I discounted it for you but not for somebody else and they happen to hear about it, yeah. how do you think they're going to feel? You know, <laughs> Not happy. <laughs> no, that's yeah. not good business practice. But uh, the other part is that um, – you know, I if if you and I are having a conversation and you come to me and say, okay, well, normally it's 3%, would you do it for two? And I say yes to get the deal done. I just cut 33% off of my income just to get the deal done. So what happens when uh, I'm negotiating with an agent on your house and I know that I can probably push them for an extra 15%, but I don't because I know to get the deal done. Yeah, It's the same thing. People yeah. are, and, and those agents out there, they... Um, there's a lot of people that that will just say, "I'm going to take a discount because I want this listing." Yeah, and and they they cave in negotiations, and I know that because I negotiate against them. Yeah, you know, and and so there's, I think you have to be able to articulate your value. Yeah, and then I also think that after your experience and all that you've been able to accomplish, you're in that place now where you can kind of you have that flexibility, right? And I think that in yeah. our in our in my regular job or whatever you call it too, like there will be people that are rude, obnoxious, whatever, and it's kind of like, in your case, you can say like, I don't, I I'm obviously not a re- the right fit for you, you're not the right fit for me, so let's part ways. I can recommend somebody that would be more in line with your fees or what yeah. you're looking for there, right? But with your value, you get a 
a choice to actually kind of pick clients yeah. that is going to work for both parties because we exactly. want to win-win from both sides and I don't want to do something for somebody that I, I don't want to promise something and not be able to deliver. I also don't want it to be a horrible experience for me personally. Yeah, right? and that's that's exactly right. You know, I I think there's there's always going to be those those clients that are not going to do it without a discount. Mm-hmm. And um, and there's always going to be the clients that they would honestly, <laughs> they want something because you're charging full price, Yeah, which is really interesting. It's a yeah. concept where you know, there's agents out there that charge 4% instead of 3% or 7 instead of 6 really. But yeah. um, and there's, there's people out there that say, no, I want that because if I'm paying more, I'm probably getting the best. And I think Sotheby's brings that though, they right? Do. Like you talk about that. Yeah. It's like you're getting oh, the best. Yeah. And so when you're dealing with multi-million dollar homes, it's a little bit of like, look, you know what you're getting into. Yeah. It might keep, clean things up a little bit. Yeah. And that is one thing that I really appreciate with Sotheby's is there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of listings out there right now that it offer less than a 3% buyer's agent commission because the commissions in real estate work where the the seller actually pays both sides. Mm-hmm. Um, they, when you sign a listing agreement, it has a percentage on there that says, okay, uh, this is your total percentage. This is the total percentage that goes to the buyer's agent. Um, and uh, and Sotheby's doesn't allow to do less than 3% to the buyer's agent, which I personally love because being a buyer's agent is a lot of work. Yeah, Like going and showing all these homes during weekends, during holidays, during, you know, and it could be 40 homes. It could be two. Those are those are a lot of fun. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, I know the work that it takes. And um, personally, I think you showed us probably 15 or so. I mean, I remember going all over and, and that's, that's pretty standard. And, yeah. and that's, that's honestly the way it should be. I mean, yeah. if you haven't, if you buy your first house, it's like, you know, that's very easy for me, but are you sure? In a crazy <laughs> time, people were buying without ever seeing it. Yeah. Like they see the listing and I got to make an offer. Yeah. They, well, they would close on it without seeing it. Yeah. I mean, I, I had two people that bought houses sight unseen. I've never been so nervous in my entire life. Wow. I'm like, I trust this, but oh my gosh, what are you doing? Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it was, it was just wild. But um, yeah, it's you know, really, I just, I, I love the industry, man. That's cool. I really do. It's, I have, I get bored so easily, mm-hmm. and I have a you know. Like I said, it's self-diagnosed ADD that yeah. I need things to keep my attention. And this is never boring. Yeah. It is there's something going on all the time. There's something to learn. There's something to go do. I'm not in the same place. Um, it's just, it's been a good fit for me. It's been a blessing for my family. It's been, you know, uh, it's real estate's been very good to me. So I can't, I can't ever say anything bad about this industry. And, um, well, and part sure. of that's you, you need to take credit too because you have that desire to learn, you have that desire to, be the best at something and so i think that anybody who gets to not just know you but work with you is very fortunate because they get the experience you bring again we haven't gone into this here but you've got experience with flips as you mentioned we've got experience with commercial with your partners you've got experience Mm -hmm. with residential you've got all this different experience and the network of people that you can tap into so they're going to have a good experience working with you and I don't know. I think that I'm always more than willing to send people your way. Oh, I appreciate that. I mean, that's that means the world to me. That's that's kind of what I do it for is the like if my friends and family send people they care about to me, that means that I'm doing a good job for them and I'm actually making a difference in their lives. You know, it's it's something where I'm I can actually help people. Yeah. Which I, I don't know that any of my previous occupations were doing that. Yeah. You know, I, I sold food storage, I guess I was helping some people. Uh, I, to me, I was like, why did you just buy seven years of food storage? I don't really understand that. But, you know, this is this is something where I am affecting people and, and it means something to them. Yeah. I mean, it mm-hmm. it changes their everyday life. Yeah. And, and it's kind of fun now. I've been in it long enough where I get a lot of, you know, I'm, I'm on the back end of, I helped you buy this five, six years ago. And I walk in and I see all the memories that are made in that house. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, that's, that's cool. Yeah. That's really fun. And then, and then I get to see their transformation of like, oh my gosh, this is because I've been fortunate that we've the market has just done this. Yeah, the entire, it's gone up like crazy the entire time that that I've been in it. And so, <laughs> there's not a client that I've sold a house to that has lost money on a house. I can guarantee you that. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. everything's gone up. And so, you know, we got to sell, and it's they're just thanking me, and it's like, well. 
part of this is the market, but yeah. this is this is really fun. Yeah, that's and, really cool. And I just I love it. It's it's a lot of fun. You understand? I have three kind of selfish questions to ask. Sure. So the first question, I'm trying to think of what order I want to go in here. Who is somebody that you think should be at the next Man Games? Mm. Uh, that wasn't there. Like my friends? Yeah. I mean, you could say like Jake Steph- Halpin. <laughs> Steph Curry. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm probably going to put, put a team together. We've already got our uh, – me and Peyton have put together our uh, our buddies that we want to play with. Uh, Peyton's little brother. Um Jake Halpin would be great. Nash, uh, Lockie, my brother-in-law. Um, so we've, we've got some options. I, I've already been planning out like, okay, these are the sports that we were in. How do we get like, you know, I just want to not get last. Yeah. That's really my goal next time. You got your prize though. Last place prizes. I is... found that in my basketball bag the other day. <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh, that was ridiculous. So yeah. it, it was. Explain what it. it. What an was up, it? An upside down heart is I believe what you said you it was. You guys showed so much heart. Oh my gosh. Well. Yeah, it uh, it was really reminiscent of testicles, is what it <laughs> silicone, but they light up yeah. different colors. You could put it, it on exciting. your bike. Yeah. You could put it actually on your my, backpack. It, it did light up, and my daughter was excited about that, but I took it away <laughs> oh, no. immediately. So <laughs> I could never play in with those. That was. Yeah. Uh, uh, she thought it was a heart. I told her it was a heart, and I guarantee you, she thinks it's a heart. So it's, a, it's a little tradition we have. Wayne got the other tradition that we have. Yeah, so. yeah, Wayne did. Ah, he's a good sport. Yeah, yeah Here's, I fun. thought he was really mad at me for the first day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think he was stoked. But <laughs> if you want to fuel the competition, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, uh, he he took it well. Um, but. That's awesome. Okay, second second kind of selfish question. Who of the people that were at Man Games this time would you want to see here doing what you just did? Ooh. Uh, ooh, that's, I mean, let me think about that one for a second. Uh, I think Sherwood would be great on this. Yeah. Um, he's he's a very, he's got a lot of diverse skills. I hate playing Sherwood in anything because he always <laughs> beats me in it. But yes. it's kind of like you, man. Of course you guys put him on your show. John's but, very, very good at everything. Yeah, he is. Um I think Taylor Dance would be probably pretty good at this. Yeah, um, he's he's a really knowledgeable guy, um, which I didn't know him before. So that Taylor was the captain of my team. Yeah, and we actually golfed together yesterday. So nice. uh, did you was, get a picture? Did you guys get a team picture? No, I guess we have to go again. Uh, uh, yes, uh, he did bring that up, and I'm pretty sure all of us forgot. Yeah, but that's what happens in golf. You're just having such a good time. Oh man, it was. We played Old Mill, and that was a gauntlet at the end of that thing. Mm, those uh, last few holes are rough. Yeah, they are, but. I have never played so well in my life. Nice. As those that that awful par five. Yeah. Where it's basically a ninety degree turn yeah. to the right. Um, me and Peyton both were in that little ditch. It's like, well, might as well go for it. So we got an iron out and just swung as hard as we could. Uh, I hit off the side of the hill and ended about six feet from the hole. Perfect. So I eagled that course hole. management. One and only time I'm ever ever gonna That's do awesome. it. <laughs> but so through that gauntlet, Peyton and I we're both like even or something like that. And nice. I was like, that was awesome. So no, but it was, uh, I think Taylor dance would be great at it. I think, um, honestly, Peyton would be a riot. Yeah. Uh, Peyton's got a lot of, uh, he's got a lot of knowledge in different areas. He owns an architecture firm. He'd, yeah. be, he'd be fascinating to talk to about that. Um, yeah. he's really, so he owns an architecture firm. He also owns Midville main street theater. Um, <laughs> pretty diverse, right? Yeah. Uh, so they bought, uh, they were trying to look for an office space and they were on Mid- Midvale Main Street and um, they, knew, well, they knew a lot of the code there because they may have helped write it yeah. and said, if we buy this for our office space, they're going to give us a loan for like 1%. It's like, okay, great. So they bought an office space above a theater and now they're running a theater. That's so, awesome. Yeah. And so that would be fun to see how that uh, transpires. Yeah. I've been um, lucky to play pickleball with him after man games and so oh, really? learn a little bit about oh, that's all awesome. that stuff. He's, yeah. he's super cool. Yeah. I really like Peyton. Good guy. Good guy. So um, let's see. I got to throw I got to throw one more out there that uh, <laughs> you got to bring Wayne on here. <laughs> so your whole team. We got to bring your whole team I'm on sorry, here. I'm sorry. You got to bring Wayne on here. I don't know if he'll agree after my shenanigans <laughs> that I did for him. He might not. You might have to bribe him. <laughs> oh, man. That'd be fun. He's he's a good guy. Now, um, uh you should bring Sioni because I yeah. love their foundation. Yeah, and I, I think, think the CEO of their place is going to come. Okay, that's yeah. all. 
I just got yeah. chills, man. I love that. Yeah. Um, just because of anything that you can do to get those guys exposure and funding. And yeah. I mean, I'd cut off my left foot and give it to them if I didn't need it. So yeah. I can't use my left hand. I should use that anyway. <laughs> so, um, you know, we love them. And, and as yeah. part of Man Games, you got to see the one with Brandon. We I want to try and do some good in the world with every yeah. event that we do. And oh, so with, with Girl Games, it was really cool because we had some of the backpacks. Again, we go all out for backpacks, and they mm-hmm. had the – I'm going to pronounce it wrong, but it's like the Fjall Raven bas- backpacks. Yeah, the so one that's able, all the rage these days. Yeah, yeah. So we were able to give some to them for the kids and stuff because, again, they don't have backpacks. Mm-hmm. They don't have things. So always trying to look for opportunities to help. So they're yeah. definitely an awesome group. Okay. I, I love it. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of just did pick my whole team. Sorry about yeah. that. Yeah. But <laughs> that's all right. I'm going to call them all out. Get on. <laughs> Perfect. It's fun. All right. Last last question. Um, you are a husband. You're a father. You... Um, are a professional you're a good person what does it mean to you to be a man Hmm. that's such an interesting question right now and i'm not talking like the political side of things right just no yeah being a man just being yeah i think that um i'm in it's i don't mean the political side what makes it interesting i mean i am in a very uh interesting stage of of uh self-development and trying to figure out uh you know i became an adult real real quick (laughs) it's like i don't i don't think uh that that last like 10 years just flew by yeah it's like all of a sudden i'm looking around i'm thinking i am not a child anymore like i need to i need to figure this out i i can have an impact in the world i can i can do all these different things and um i think what it actually means to to me is to be able to uh make a difference to the people that uh, are closest to me to be able to help the people that are closest to me and to be vulnerable. Hmm. What do you mean by that? Um, That's something that there's just not enough of in this world is that um, honest conversations are hard to have. Yeah. You know, you and I have had them for a long time that, but that's, that's not a common thing. Yeah. You know, it's not a common thing to admit that I've made a mistake or to admit that, you know, somebody screwed up. Uh, I think being a man is, is being, um, being accountable, you know, being, being accountable for your actions, your decisions and the ripple effect that it has, because it's not, uh, the more that I'm, that I'm growing and, and seeing the impact of, of my choices, uh, it's not just me anymore. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not even just, my immediate group of friends or my immediate family, the the decisions that I make are affecting and can affect my community mm-hmm. that I have, uh, which is, I think that that's, that's one of the largest uh, impact centers is it, what is, what is the community that you live in? Your whether it's, you know, you can go as micro to just your little street, yeah. right? Are you going to be that person on your street that, uh, walks your dog and doesn't pick up after him. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, I may have been gu- guilty of that a couple of <laughs> times, but I always try and come back. I had yeah. three dogs, man. I ran out of bags. It's just dogs. It is. But, um, or are you going to be that person that, uh, that goes out and, and welcomes people with open arms? Um, I'm reading a really interesting book right now, actually. Um, which the title is escaping my mind, but <laughs> it's a lot uh, of pressure in front of a microphone. No, I, I, and cameras. I can never remember names. I hope of the books. cameras are still going. I think so. Yeah, that yeah, one's good. That. Um, so basically, this this entire book is trying to say, uh, why would you shut off, shut down your heart, yeah, you know, in in any sense of the world, and um, and shut down yourself to experiences, you know. and and what does what is the actual cost of that? It's you shut it down for protection. If you're not open, you can't get hurt. Yeah, you know, which there's a lot of people that live their lives that way, and I don't, I don't think that's a responsible thing to do, and I don't think it's a fair thing to do to everybody around you. Um, and it's not more; it's, it's worse for you. Yeah, you're you're safe, but you're sheltered, and you're you don't have that uh, you don't have the chance to grow. Would you agree that there? I I feel a pressure as a man that. I'm not supposed to be able to show vulnerability and weakness Absolutely. because I am a provider. I am a yeah. whatever that may be. 
because I feel that pressure, but I, I feel the same way you do of there have been events in my life where, I mean, there's somebody close to you and then they're gone the next day, right? Like things, life can be done in yeah. an instant. And so I don't ever want my parents. I don't ever want my kids. I don't ever want my friends. If I were to leave today, I want them to know how much I appreciate them. Right. Yeah. And I look at man games in particular, I look at the group of friends that I have, and there are a lot of people that I didn't know or that I'm not close with, but there are a group of friends, core friends there. I look at like Donnie, right? Mm -hmm. Makes the trip here. And Donnie and I have a long relationship that you know about, and I'm probably overshare a lot of times, but there's just people there that I want them to know how much I appreciate them. And and during like the most hellish times of my life, there have been people that have been there to help. Sure. And I can never repay them for that but I want them to know how much I love them. And like we've talked about it with you and in the house and just growing up. And there are just so many relationships that I wish people were more willing to share. But you talked, you said like, if I share that with you, if I'm like, Hey Brad, I love you, man. Like, and here's why, and here's what you've done for me in my life. And you're like, Oh cool, dude. Like, I think we're all afraid of telling like the girl, right. I love you. And she doesn't reciprocate right. it. And so right. there's like that. Well, you're afraid of rejection. Yeah. And yeah. who wasn't? I mean, who hasn't been yeah. rejected in their life? Everyone has, you know. I don't think you have. Oh, I, I, I definitely have pretty been much. I, uh, <laughs> let me. How, how much time you got? Yeah. No. <laughs> We're at a, uh, an hour forty right now. Oh, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah. Um, so, I, I'm trying to go back to this question because it's such an interesting time to ask that question mm-hmm. of what is it like to be a man? What does it mean to me to be a man? Um, and, and I want to say that. I'm not the stereotypical, I have to provide, I have to do this, I have to, you know. But when I look at my life, that's that's what I am. You know, I'm I'm very fortunate to be able to have uh, my wife at home with the kids, which her job is way harder than mine. Let me give you that. She was gone the last two weekends, and oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I, I think what it means is to, to be able to uh, have the courage to fight for what you believe in. You know, and and hopefully what you believe in is the right thing. There's plenty of people that, you know, I don't think there's ever been a war where both sides didn't think they were right. Right. You know, um, but uh, I, I think that that's having the having the courage to be able to to stand up for yourself, even if people are telling you that you are absolutely wrong. Yeah. Because um, that's happened a lot to me. That's happened. Yeah. I mean quite a few times and and sometimes I was wrong you know yeah. go figure but that's what's so interesting because yeah. I think that it's so important to have something that you believe in mm-hmm. right so you, you need to have a belief in whatever you want to call it yeah but then also have the humility to acknowledge that you might be wrong right yeah. like that's a tough balance to have of like I am set like no I believe in this I am right yeah but then it's, I was like oh crap like what I believed at 16 and at 25 is different than mm-hmm. what I believe now absolutely and 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 there's all different aspects of that. I yeah. mean, it could be something as much as, uh, you know, as heavy as religion mm-hmm. and, uh, and you know, it, things that are really, you know, political stances and abortion, all these, all these different red button issues that people change their minds on. Or it could be something as simple as, I mean, I got corrected in dodgeball. <laughs> I was 100% positive I hit Ted. Yeah. Ted, I'm sorry. Uh Turns out they filmed it. I didn't hit Ted. <laughs> so <laughs> it hit the ground. But I yeah. was a thousand percent right in my mind. And I came at him like a jackhammer. I, I didn't like, even <laughs> know that happened, right? Because so, no. I was like off yeah. on the side and somebody said, hey, did you see the volleyball? There was kind of a tense moment. I was like, what are you talking about? And then they're like, yeah, yeah, Brad and Ted. And I was like, I didn't even know that that happened. I mean, I just, it was close enough that I was like, I really thought I hit him. Other people, and then somebody else said it, and so obviously I was right. Yeah, because yeah. as soon as because your team was like, it yeah, was a bad you, idea. You nailed it. Yeah, as soon as somebody, I want as much as anybody for back. Ted to be out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and I had to, I had to come to the humility because it was so it was after the game was over, uh, and before, um, before the ceremonies after. Yeah. Uh, um, who was who came up to me? Somebody that was filming. I can't even remember who it was because I was so pissed off that I was. Was wrong. it a volunteer? Or was it a player? It was a volunteer. Um, whoever, someone was filming it and they went back through and was like, Hey, I just, I wanted to look at this cause I wanted to see if it was right or not. And just let you know, did hit the ground first. Like it was close, but it did hit the ground. I was just like, oh. <laughs> and that's yeah. one of those moments in life, right? Where, uh, 
I could have just ignored Ted for the rest of the time, but I decided to go up to him and be like, hey, so it turns out you were right. <laughs> and I'm really sorry for my yeah. uh, outburst at you. And, you know, we talked for a second and, and I would think that if I saw Ted now, he'd laugh, you yeah. know, and I mean, he laughed then, so I'm sure he would. Yeah. And, but it's, it's moments like that, that was that a, a big significant moment in life? No, yeah. you know, it's a dodgeball game. We were losing anyway, <laughs> but I wanted that one win. Yeah. Um, and so being able to admit that I was wrong, uh, even when I was a hundred percent sure that I was right, because yeah. I was positive. Yeah. Like, Eric, I basically knocked him. If you ask me, like I, he almost died because I hit him so hard with that ball. <laughs> we <laughs> threw him. Yeah. And and but you know, I was I couldn't have been more wrong. Yeah. And it's moments like that where you have that gut check. Yeah. And you have that uh, like, oh man, uh, not only was I wrong, I really, really was trying to prove my point that I was right. Yeah. It's like, ooh, that's a hard moment. Yeah. And um, and it can be that. Or it can be, you know, into parenting. Yeah. You, you, you can relate that in so many different ways. And, and really it comes down to whenever I've had a tough situation or a tough moment or a tough conversation, it's ego. Yeah. It all comes down to ego. It's can I put that aside? And ego plays a significant role for everybody. Yeah. You know, and especially at man games, man. You've got <laughs> so many alphas out there. Yeah in a row that everyone wants to win, everyone's got an ego because yeah. everyone's been good at things for most of their lives, yeah. you know? And so um, being able to to recognize when that is driving things uh, is huge. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that humans are so complex and the more humans you get in a certain area, the more complex it gets. Yeah. But I think that you are a fantastic human I appreciate our relationship and thank you for spending time with me. And I hope that our 30 followers think that this is good. <laughs> We're I'd probably be at 31 by the end of the day. Probably 15 <laughs> of them are just my other accounts that I've just oh, no. subscribed with. So <laughs> that's right. In yeah. 10 years, we're going to go back and be like, this is where it all started. This is where it all started. But no. seriously, I appreciate you and, and I can't wait to have you back at Man Games and for all the things that you're going to accomplish, not just at Man Games, but in your life. Yeah. I think it's fun to watch. Likewise, Eric. Thank you so much for having me on, man. Yeah. Um, anytime I can spend an hour and 46 minutes talking about life with you is a big win in my book. So um, good time. can't wait to see what happens with Man Games in the future. I'll be there. So somebody's got to lose. So I guess I'll keep showing up <laughs> <No>. now. <laughs> so, okay. Right. You're a stud, man. Okay. Thanks again. Thanks again.